All right, so I'm back. I meant to do a uh, a live stream yesterday of some programming that I was going to do, and it never happened because the audio, I couldn't figure out with my encoder how to get the audio volume any higher than it was. Everything was maxed, and it was just really silent. So uh, instead, I'm going to show you something that I'm working on, and uh, this is going to be really haphazard in that the video, I, this is really one-off. I don't have any stands or anything. I'm just... My room's a mess, and I just wanted to share with you uh, what one of the things that I've kind of been working on. So let's go ahead. This is going to be focusing a little bit on sampling and how to get samples into the cro uh, into the Chronos. But some of you have asked about sampling other keyboards and things like that. So I'm going to show you one of the things that I've been doing um, on the 2600 is I've been moving some of the sounds over from him or her into this one. And in the process of doing that, some of the some of the time I can just program it, but some of the time I actually need to rip the samples right off the keyboard to use in my project. So I'm going to show you how to do some of that. So first things first, uh, I've touched on this a little bit before, but one of the things that I need to do is I need to find a, a blank program, in this case the default program, and I'm going to edit it. But now I need to find the key map that I want to kind of get. So in this case I'm looking for heaven bells. Now, first things first, this has a piano release, so it gets quieter and quieter even though it's looping. Okay, so first things first, um, what I want to do is I want to change that so the amp, uh, the amp output, rather right here, the amp envelope, instead of being natural, I'm going to set it here so that when I play it, it stays the same volume while it loops. So that's the first thing. Second thing is I want to make it a consistent volume, so I'm going to go to the amp page and I'm going to change this from 35 decibels for velocity tracking to nothing, and that's going to make it really loud, so I'm going to adjust this down to zero. Uh, actually, that wasn't so bad. Yeah, that's just like I'm playing it as loud as I can. Good. So now I've got my loop points. Well, I can hear them. Like, you can hear it listen. If you listen, you can hear it loop. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then I know my loop point's in there somewhere. So, uh, next thing I'm going to do is I go, go back to the key map, and now I'm going to edit the key map itself. And so what I'm doing is I'm showing... See, this, this sample, the way this works, is it's saying this sample is spread over C0 to E3, which means the high note is E3, which there's a good chance that E3 is where the sample starts and everything is stretched downwards. Um, and we can verify this by playing E3. Notice the sound difference. Maybe you can't hear that, but there's a discernible quality difference. Which makes me tell that this sample was probably stretched from here. I'm going to guess here. Yeah. And this is, I don't want to say typical of Kurzweil. This is just how they save so much space is they would get a sample. And they stretch it all the way down. And then they have another sample and they stretch that all the way down. And they just have a decent loop point. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to sample E3 and then the next one, G4, C6, D sharp 6, F sharp 6, A6. And I doubt this is G10 um, and I don't have a G10. So I'll just grab that one. So next thing. So now I'm back here. I'm going to bring up, uh, in this case, Audacity. Oh, there we go. So I've got Audacity up, and I'm just going to start recording. There we go. And I'm going to play this E3. Make sure I'm not redlining. Uh, it's pretty close, actually. I think I was clipping there. Uh, it's hard to say. That's pretty close. I'm going to back the volume off just a little bit. So I don't want that to clip. I want it to be loud, but I don't want it to clip. So let's bring this down just a hair. That seems better. All right, so let's do this again. Record. Let's play this E3. And no clipping. Okay, so you see I've got loop points here, right? I only need one, technically, to make the right loop, which means I can make the recording really, really small if I get rid of all that extra, all that extra stuff. So. I'm, st I'm just yammering and, and recording. So what I'm thinking 
when it comes to doing like putting this in the chronos, what I want to do is I basically want to get one or two of these loops just so I have enough that I can loop in the chronos itself. And then the rest of this data I'm going to get rid of. That way I don't have to take up, you know, tons of megabytes for my samples. Um, okay, so let's get rid of that. We'll start from scratch. And I'm going to put them all in one file and I'll show you why I do that. Okay, so here we go. Uh, E3. <laughs> Okay, we'll go to the next one, G4. Good, go to the next one, C6. Go to the next one, D sharp six. Go to the next one, F sharp six. Go to the next one, A6. A6? Yeah, A6. Makes sense, there's a minor third up. And the last one, instead of A sharp six, I'll just grab this one. There. Got my samples. All right, so let's stop this. All right. So first things first, I'm gonna try and get rid of a lot of the empty space. And this is kind of a manual process. Let me see if there's a way I can put my phone down and just kind of, uh, let me see here. Oh, CDs, DVDs, these things, out of the way. All right, yeah, it's not really a, a good view. I don't have a stand. Tell you what I'm gonna do. Um, if you wanna fast forward to another part of the video, you can. Otherwise, you get to watch me edit this um, with one hand, so that's exciting. So I'm just gonna get rid of some of that space, do that. That. Oh, I don't want to cut off the beginning there. Do that. Same here. And was that it? No, nope, there was more. Yeah, we don't need most of that anyway. Now, with the Kronos, there's a few options that you have. You could, in theory, keep this whole thing as one file, save it to the Kronos as a, as a multi-sample, and then just set your loop points for each version of the sample. Um, for me, I prefer actually to like grab the whole sample and uh, dump it as a file. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna get rid of some of these loops. Let's say the first, these ones, I don't need those. And we'll do the same here, because we've got some decent loop points. So I'll just get rid of that. You'll notice I'm just shortening the files just a little bit to save space. And there's no particular thing that I'm doing. It's uh, it's fairly arbitrary if you wanted to get really specific. Because this is, I don't say quick and dirty, but this is uh, me just grabbing some samples that I need for my project. Well, and, oh, that's going to be real tight. That's okay, though. Get rid of that. There we go. And in there, same thing. Okay, next thing. Uh, the reason I choose Audacity for this one is because what I can do is I can highlight a sample and I can go File, Export Selection. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna export this selection. Um, this one's called Dream Bells. Or Dream Bell, and we'll, what was it? It was, uh, what was the key map? E3. So, keymap E3. There. So I export it, and that's saved. Now what I can do is I can delete it, and go to the next one, and do the exact same thing. Sorry if the uh, camera's all shaky here. Alright. Alright, good. And we'll go file, export. That one happens to be G4, I believe. That's what the pitch sounded like. So let me uh, get this Dream Bell selection. This is a tedious process. I'm sure there's software that does this, I just don't know what it is. Was that G4? <coughs> yeah, that was G4. All right, good. Export that bad boy. All right, delete that. 
Try and not capture as much sound at the beginning. All right, which one's this one? That's C6. So I'll export. Same thing. C6. Okie dokie. Let's delete that. And there's a very good chance that these are actually not separate samples. There's a good chance that it's just C6 um, scaled upwards. And because the project that I'm working on doesn't require those samples, I'm not going to use those at all. Um, I'm just going to get rid of them because I don't need them. And that being said, let me grab those, uh, those files. Now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to edit these. And the reason I'm going to edit them... No, not that. Here we go. The reason I'm going to edit them is I want to get rid of the space at the very, very beginning. The sample space. So I'm just going to highlight that, that space, and get rid of it. That way, I don't need to mess with my start loop point whenever I'm done. So I'm just going to export Dream Bells. Yeah, let's replace it. Okay, so Dream Bell C6, E3, we'll do the same thing. No, ah, my bad. So we'll just highlight the very beginning. We'll find out where the sample starts and then delete all the space prior to it. There we go. Same thing, we'll save. And last one. Same idea. So tedious, especially if you have lots and lots of samples or sample layers. That would be a pain. A lot of respect for those people that do the sampling crap. All right. Uh, now let's see. We've got the ones that are called old. Uh, I'm going to hang on to them just in case. I'm going to take this sample and I'm going to move it to my desktop and then this one and then this one no this one there and I'm going to move them over to my um, zip drive and not my zip drive that's old school technology um, one of these flash drive ah first time look at that all right so let's grab these samples I'm sorry if this is out of focus. There we go. Bam. So we've got our three samples right here, ready to go. I'm going to live life dangerously. Some of you eject this stuff. Not me. All right. Let's see if we can figure this out. Uh, let's see here. Oh, that's plugged in. So, quick little trick. When you go to the disk mode and you click this file, there, see how it disappeared on its own? That means it detected the, the external thing there. All right, so next thing we need to do is we need to take these samples. So in this case, I've got my dream bells right there. There we go. So I'm gonna select those. Uh, Multi-select, that one and that one. And we're gonna load. Yes, I'm sure. Okay, now when I go into sampling mode, and I look at all of my multi samples that I've got so far, I can go up here and say, yep, I want to create a new stereo multi sample. And now what I do is I'm going to edit that sample using this thing. Now I'm going to choose the, the sample. If this camera would focus, that'd be great too. So I've got a lot of samples in here that I've been using should be right at the end. There they go. So Dream Bells. And uh, I've gone through a video on how to do all this sampling stuff already. So I'm not going to get too much into the details of it because I don't have a proper mount and it would be nice if you could see exactly what's going on. So I'm going to go ahead and sample all this stuff and get a, the sampling corrected. Um, I would like to talk in the future at some point about how uh, you can use looping and there's tricks that you can use. Um, so if you're going to loop your samples um, 
there's some really neat uh, techniques that you can use that I found very useful, but uh, I'm not going to talk about the de that today, but hopefully you find this at least somewhat useful uh, if you'd plan on, you know, if you've got multiple synths and you want to grab some stuff off some old ones and throw them on your new one or throw them on your Kronos, um, this is the basic process on how to get that started. So, enjoy it!